Hey, it's John. Welcome back to my channel. And today I got a little bit of a different video for you. Now, as this is the month leading up to Amtrak's 50th anniversary on May 1st, uh, 2021, I've been doing a series of videos on Amtrak and I want to make this video because first of all, I'm actually really busy at the moment working on future videos. And secondly, uh, this story was pretty interesting to me and I hope it will be interesting to some of you too. So the story of my first trip on the Acela actually starts a few days before I rode the Acela and the story starts in Chicago, Illinois. Now I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. So me and my girlfriend at the time were taking a trip to the East Coast. It was a two week long trip and uh, she had never ridden a train before. So to remedy this situation, since it wasn't a very hectic trip, uh, we decided to fly from Omaha to Chicago and then take the Lakeshore Limited from Chicago to Boston because we were visiting Boston first. So we got up early and flew to Chicago and spent the day in Chicago. And the Lakeshore Limited actually leaves Chicago Union Station at 9.30 Central Time. And because we had a room at, we were able to visit the First Class Lounge in Union Station. And we were pretty tired, so we got there a couple hours early. Now, like I said, the train was supposed to depart at 9.30 Central Time. So the train should have began boarding about 9 o'clock Central Time. And it just so happens that we're sitting in the First Class Amtrak Lounge of Chicago Union Station. And we're seeing on the TV on CNN, a train derailment had just occurred. Now, the date of this trip that we were taking was May 12th, 2015. And for anybody that knows, that was the date of the deadly Amtrak 188 disaster in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So this derailment in Philadelphia occurred at 9.23 Eastern time, which was just about one hour and seven minutes before our train was supposed to depart Union Station in Chicago. So as we were all about to board an Amtrak passenger train, Everybody was, of course, glued to the television set, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information coming out at the time other than that the derailment was horrible and it was very dark. There wasn't much information at all. So after watching the TV for a little bit, I can't remember exactly what time the news came on. There was probably a little bit of a delay, maybe as much as a half an hour, but I can't remember exactly. I just remember that it wasn't too long before we were supposed to start boarding. But anyway, we got the announcement that uh, the train was going to be delayed a little bit. So what I ended up finding out later was that they had pulled our train out of Union Station to the uh, maintenance yard and picked up a couple of private Amtrak business cars and shoved back into the station. So I believe we're just about exactly a half an hour late leaving Chicago. It might have been more than that, but I'm not 100% sure. But you know, a delay on Amtrak is absolutely nothing new. I didn't really think too much about it at the time. We were kind of worried when we heard the news because we had actually booked train tickets between Boston and New York for a few days after we got to Boston. But what was up in the air was the train tickets between New York and DC a few days after that. And so we were hoping that they'd get the uh, Northeast Corridor back open. And we figured if they hadn't gotten it open, we might be able to get a bus bridge, but it was a little bit up in the air and we were a little bit nervous about the whole situation. But anyway, we were excited for our room at, I'd never ridden in a compartment on a Viewliner before. And we were pretty tired, like I said, so we just went to bed and didn't think too much about it. So if you've ever ridden the Lakeshore Limited, you'll know that if you're late departing Union Station, uh, you're not going to make up time along the way. <laughs> Man, we kept losing a little bit of time, but other than that, the trip was pretty uneventful until we got to Syracuse, New York. I didn't smoke, but I had gotten off the train at Syracuse because I believe it was a little bit of a longer stop just to stretch my legs and get some fresh air. And I wanted to look at the two private cars in the rear end of our train. So I wish I'd taken pictures of the private cars. I really wasn't thinking about doing YouTube in the future or anything like that, but it would have been nice to help embellish this story. As I was looking at the extra private cars in the rear end though, I noticed a bunch of Amtrak police and SUVs in the parking lot of the Syracuse Amtrak station. And I also noticed Amtrak president Joe Boardman and his entourage walking towards those SUVs. So what had happened was apparently Joe Boardman and his fellow executives were in Chicago at the time of the derailment, and they decided to pull the Lakeshore Limited out, put tack the private cars on, and uh, ride back to the East Coast to get there as quick as possible, and I'm sure to do crisis management along the way. And I can only imagine uh, what the atmosphere was like in those coaches. I'm sure it was pretty horrible. But that definitely left a lasting memory on my first trip on the Lakeshore Limited. So anyway, as this derailment was being cleaned up, all service north and south of Philadelphia was totally non-existent. And there was, uh, I believe there was probably shortages of equipment that uh, couldn't get back and forth, something like that, which may have had something to do with my first trip on the Acela. So anyway, after spending a few days in Boston, we took the Acela from Boston South Station to New York Penn Station. The trip out of Boston South Station was a little bit uh, interesting to say the least also. For being the highest priority trains on the network, the Acela 
you would think that punctuality on tracks that they own, <laughs> on tracks that they dispatch, uh, would be, you know, as good as it could possibly be. But we're a half hour late departing South Station on the Acela because they couldn't change operating ends. For whatever reason, there was probably some computer glitch and the train didn't want to change operating ends. Uh, my favorite part was, I, she was probably a train master, but uh, some manager or some employee came out uh, to try and help, you know, fix the situation. And she was wearing like flip-flops and I just thought that was, because G-Core states that uh, if you're working in an office environment, you don't have to wear closed-toed shoes. And you know, obviously, many passengers on Amtrak don't wear closed-toed shoes, but I just find that kind of amusing that, anyway, that doesn't matter. They finally got the problem fixed and we left almost exactly a half an hour late out of Boston South Station. To their credit, Amtrak did make up about 12 minutes of time on the trip. We arrived in New York Penn Station about 18 minutes after we were supposed to, which in well, some other countries would be totally unheard of, but in America, you know, that's it's pretty good. They, were, they did all right. <laughs> other than that, the trip itself was fine. I was a little bit surprised, you know, there's like 20 some miles of track where you can go 150 miles an hour. And that, that part was cool in Rhode Island. But uh, as we got closer to the city, man, there are some rough sections of the track on the Northeast Corridor. Uh, it kind of made me feel like I was back at work. I was not expecting that. But uh, all in all, the Acela trip was fine. Uh, it didn't help my traveling buddy at the time because she was going to New York City for the first time and we were going to an Airbnb out in the Bronx and uh, didn't really think about <laughs> trying to arrive in the daylight and uh, getting stuck at South Station wasn't helping the situation there. But at the end of the day, we made it to our Airbnb, no problems, Amtrak sort of made up for lost time. And for the final Amtrak trip that had been kind of hanging in the balance due to the derailment in Philadelphia, we took a Northeast Regional between New York City and Washington, D.C. We'd heard a few days earlier that Amtrak was intending to get the Northeast Corridor back open for Monday morning rush hour on Monday the 18th of May 2015. So when we heard that we were ecstatic because like I said we were pretty worried and Amtrak wasn't announcing anything about cancellations or bus bridges or anything like that and if Amtrak hadn't been able to get us down to DC we were, would have been scrambling for a flight like probably everybody else and it would have been kind of a total disaster. I can only imagine what it was like for the people that did have all their trains canceled. I'm sure it was not a fun situation to be in and I totally sympathize with them. But anyway, if you follow this channel for a long time, you'll know that we were able to make it through. Uh, we went through on a Tuesday, the 19th, the day after the Northeast Corridor opened back up. So it wasn't any kind of down to the wire type situation, but it was pretty close. Obviously the derailment was horrible and my deepest sympathies go out to everybody that lost loved ones or was personally injured in the derailment. The derailment never should have been allowed to happen. Uh, Access should have been extended along the entire Northeast Corridor, in my opinion, when the Acela was rolled out back in 2000, 2001. Of course, that didn't happen because Congress didn't appropriate the money for it. PGC was installed immediately after the derailment before tra the tracks were opened back up to the public. And finally, Amtrak achieved full PTC integration by the before the end of 2018, which was their deadline. It's good that we're nearing the end of PTC implementations. So we can finally, hopefully, once and for all, move beyond uh, horrific loss of life derailments like this and collisions. And hopefully going forward, Amtrak will be able to maintain a much better safety record. That said, we did go through the derailment site at Frankfurt Junction. Uh, not all the freight tracks have been repaired. The Northeast Corridor obviously is back up and running. A significant amount of catenary was damaged or destroyed in the derailment. I can't remember exactly what track 188 was on, but obviously there was a lot of track work that needed to be done. There was still a lot of machines. The train was all gone. I do have a video of it. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that it was out of focus when I took the video, but I posted that on my YouTube channel several years ago. You can see it here. And all in all, we got to Washington, D.C. Amtrak came through for us and because it was a shorter vacation we decided to fly home but anyway that was my first trip on the lakeshore limited in the acela and it, uh, what a what a trip it was i hope i never hear i'm in a situation like that again not because i suffered any real consequences due to the derailment in philadelphia but i hope there's no more derailments ever in this country 
So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out my Patreon or socials, the links are in the description. Please subscribe for more Rare-related content like this, and I will see you all soon.